Hi everyone, I am Blaze here. So some big news today. Project 1999, they just released a post about opening up the green server. So the green server is essentially going to be their magnum opus here on P99. It's something that they've been trying to do for the longest time. So the green server is essentially where on blue they tried to work out all the kinks, they tried to work out all the patches, they tried to get everything done, they tried to recreate everything that happened in the original EverQuest, in the original timeline. And it took them a lot longer than they really expected to, I imagine. It took them pretty long to be able to get all the core critical parts of this time period from beginning of the game on to like the end of Velius, I think. And all the patches and all the sequ sequential uh, timeline stuff that ex occurred. And now that they finally have all the kinks worked out, this is what they've been planning on doing. They wanted to open up a server and where the expansions dropped in a similar time frame as did happen in the original, all the patches drop in a similar time frame as of the original, it's intended to be the closest recreation um, in terms of gameplay mechanics as well as um, expansion and patch release schedules as it was on the original EverQuest back in 1999 up until the end of Elias. So, Green Server, it's going to be releasing on October 25th, 2019. And what it is, it's a uh, new player versus environment server without any patches or expansions enabled upon release. Old style mechanics and drops will be enabled, including legacy items such as Guys of the Deceiver and Mana Stone. The server will then progress through all patches on the same timeline as a EverQuest's original launch, all the way up to the latest patch in Velius. This means, based upon October 2019 the launch date, there are few major timeline changes. So in January 2020, the Plane of Fear, April 2020, Hate, May of 20, Temple of Souls like Rose, so those quest lines, Legacy items stop to tr cease to drop, so that would be the end of the Guys of Deceiver, Mana Stone, and stuff like that. August of 20, you get Plane of Sky. So most of the old world raid content is enabled by August of the 20. And that's going to be a lot of competition. And then in November of uh, 20 is when Kunark will finally drop. I imagine there's going to be patches all throughout this. April 21, Epics will be enabled. And on the 21st, Scars of Elias will drop. And then uh, they're expecting that the above list is not exhaustive. Each month will have unlocks of patches from March 1999 to December 2001. Okay. And the lifetime of the server with green server at a time yet to be decided eventually will merge into blue and start over again. The merge will not happen until at least six months after the last patch in Velius, no earlier than January of 2023. So the server looks like it'll be around pretty much about a little bit over three years. Um, in terms of the blue server, will always be open and remain in its current point in the timeline with possibly some custom content being added to keep things interesting in a classically inspired style. I don't know, that that, that might be a little bit too difficult, because it's it might be hard to manage three servers that have red. To do all three, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that with their staff, but we'll see. Multiple green servers. Uh, many players have expressed concern about the population that green server may bring and that we may need to open up more than one server to satisfy interest. They're not planning on doing it right now, but uh, if needed, they will evaluate it. Uh, the concern, though, is that um, servers powerful enough to handle thousands of players are not easily acquired for a project like ours, which brings us to the next topic, so just asking for donations. The it, project runs off of donations exclusively. And they are, uh, in this further section, they're addressing concerns about how competitive it's going to be on certain limited time items. Um, they're thinking about creating something, a list, a command to add yourself to a list. So 
So say if you're talking about Guide of the Deceiver camping, the uh, Ghoul Assassin, things of that nature. Development won't stop for green and blue. The project will continue to make adjustments to fix bus bugs and restore classic functionality as becomes possible to do so. Raid rules, this is the thing. Is how for just shy of a year, eleven months, there's <laughs> you're just kind of playing a fear, playing a hate and playing a sky for a a very short period of time and you're gonna have a lot of people trying to compete there it's gonna be tight tight raid rules the customer service team will be addressing raid concerns in a separate new thread in the raid discussion forum most of the raid rules will stay as they are with first to engage being the primary mechanism there also may be some special considerations similar to blue such as playing the sky this is still being discussed internally i don't know how that's going to turn out it might become a complete nightmare to be honest but we'll see Play nice policy. Absolutely, yeah. That's how they do guide applications. They're going to be recording more, recruiting more guides. Uh, no boxing allowed. Character names is kind of interesting. You will not be able to create a character on green with the same character name as blue unless you're on the same account that owns the character on blue. You may also bring the server up early to allow character creations ahead of time. We will announce this as much as in advance as we can, and we told, intend to hold a public brief beta as soon as hardware is in place for the green server. So that's huge. October 25th, 2019. So in about a month. Yeah, I think about a month. month and a few days. This is going to be dropping. So that is going to be huge. Absolutely huge. Um... You know, if you weren't around to play EverQuest Live as it was in the original era, this is probably going to be your first opportunity, if you were too late like I was, to be able to play P99 back when it first dropped, at least P99 Blue. I didn't get in until Bellius was well out, to be honest. Um, So definitely, this is going to be that opportunity to those people that are looking for that. There are some things, though. Uh, I have made a video on my review of EverQuest live on TLP versus playing on Project 1999. I've put in years on P99, and I've also been playing since the drop of Mangler. been raiding every single week, so I'll put out my impressions on that. I'm going to leave a link to that. I think what it comes down to... If you want a more true classic experience, if you like the ex extra difficulty of this game, and you have the time to put in, I think P99 is probably a better option for you, just in general. But if if you have a bit more, if your time's a little bit more crunched, um, if you'd like to be able to experience more content without having to be in the top rating guild, if you would like something that's a, a bit more convenient in times in terms of time sinks time concerns a bit more convenience in terms of many of the features that made things easier in some regards a bit more convenient to play then you might just want to wait till the next roll around of the next tlp server which should be coming out soon whenever but um thank you guys all for watching and i shall see you in the next one